Let's go, Coach. Let's go, Will. Gotcha. Now that you've got you know, some actual game film you know, on your team, how much value is that for a teaching tool? And it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, you get to see what guys respond in what ways uh, on the field. Everybody responds a little bit differently. It's like, it's, it's like you saw what you wanted at the end of practice here. Yeah, I mean, we ran perfect, perfect tens. You know, essentially ten of them because each group has to do five. And I think our, we didn't jump off sides. Our guys did a really, really nice job. Okay, what do you think about the offensive line performance in the game and where you're out with that group overall? Yeah, I mean, it was like I said, they were not aggressively coming off the ball. And I think part of that was myself and scheme wise. Uh, they were a big twist team last year, so everything was we were trying to negate twists. And uh, we took a little aggression out of them, and that was uh, MA on my fault. I should have let them be way more aggressive on front to get movement and uh, lived with some of the issues with twist games, uh, you know, if, if they move on you. So I'll take a little bit of that, and I think they're showing that a little bit better this week, and that's an emphasis for us. What's different about uh, going up against the odd front and how they might move all around? Movements are different. You know, when you face a four down team, uh, the three technique loop games, the three man loop games are more common to stop the run, right? When you pace an odd front, it's more pressures and fits stop the run. The twist games aren't, there's not a variety of twist games as you could because you can't bring inside D tackle twists with two of the back twists with away from the back twists and three down. It's pressure based, right? So the twist games get removed and it's a lot more fits, structures, soundness and of the structures of the fits, and then just overall pressures to stop the run. You hear a lot of the you get you make the most improvements from week one to week two. Is that true? Yeah, I hope. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. Uh, I think uh, I think that's just, a, you know, coaches have sayings of, oh, you make so much this, you make so much that. Uh, they're like built-in motivations to every team in all of sports. And then you make the most adjustments after when you get into conference play, you're that much better than you were before, right? Every time you play football, you should get better because you should learn from it. And if you don't, there's a problem. So if we should make the same jump that we make from one and two, then I would hope that we make from two and three based off the mistakes we made. The key is you don't make the same mistake multiple times. And that's the challenge. So can we learn from game one, fix those mistakes, and apply them in game two? How about for Kate to finally get into a, you know, a college game, make that jump as a true freshman? That's got to be wonders for, for him. And what did you see from practice sorry yeah he uh, obviously he learned from from a few things and uh, he's out here working that's all he knows how to do so he's same same Jaden coming out here to work what are the biggest differences preparationally this week compared to last week's game time you know you don't have as much time when you when you face a team that you have months to prepare for we had two weeks to prepare for but you have no film of them this year you chase a lot of ghosts you paranoia yourself uh, this week is similar, but at least you have a less time to prepare, so you can't chase as many ghosts by default because you don't have as much time to chase the ghost, right? So I think it's a little bit different from the preparation standpoint. There may be some things you that they've done, you know, two years ago. I go all the way back two to three years on teams, but that you don't go back to a two years ago. They did it twice versus one team in a bowl game, right? You just skip those where most weeks we'll go back and we'll dig for everything anybody's ever done and we make sure we're ready for it. My wife doesn't like that part because that makes me stay in the office later. Coach, I know um, communication has been a big emphasis for you and your team. How do you think that's been progressing so far? Uh, it's been good. Uh, I think uh, today was an emphasis for us. There's a period where nobody's, ta nobody's talking we line up wrong. And it's like, well, there's the problem right there fix it. Like either we're going to allow it to happen or we're going to fix it. When you face a problem, we're going to have a ton of problems this year. We're year one. We have 50 new players. We, we run complicated schemes on both sides of the ball, aggressive schemes on both sides of the ball. We're going to make mistakes and we're going to get better from those mistakes if we coach them, if we stop allowing them to happen. So when we see it, we have to stop it. We have to make an emphasis that's not okay. Fix the problem, carry on. And if we continue to do that, we're going to continue to be better every single week that we take the field, and that's the goal. And who knows what year three and four look like if we get better every single day for the next 24 to 36 months. Cam getting the targeting call last week, how do you feel about it? Yes. Keep yeah, we're, gonna, we're doing some drills where we get free runners on the quarterback, and then we just have to tackle the quarterback with our head up because you can't ever sack a quarterback in team periods. So you have to try to simulate that uh, within individual drills. How does the preparation change going from a Thursday night game to a Saturday where you know you typically 
have seven days to prep for the game? Yeah, uh, for us, we took, basically we got one bonus day of an extended meeting and a walkthrough, uh, and that was really it, because you still have your 20 hour week. So you can't actually go seven days this week because you only have six days, 20 hours in a week to prepare. You have to have a day off in a week. So our day off is Sunday, right? So we practiced Monday through, but Monday was a little bit longer because we get to do obviously more prep because we put the game to bed on Saturday. So because we put the game to bed on Saturday, Monday can be all future opponent instead of Monday being prior game and future opponent. It's just future. Coach, you identified yesterday that you want your players to identify their favorite mistake. How do you think they are doing as identifying their own mistakes and correcting them themselves? I think they I think they listen and they learn. And we'll see, you know, throughout the weekend on game day if it gets applied in a chaotic situation because that's the key. Okay. What was your favorite mistake? My, my favorite mistake was the end of the first half, we let the clock run down to about 18 seconds because we knew we wanted it to be the last possession. We had two timeouts, uh, we had multiple timeouts, so we knew we could run two more plays to kick a field goal on fourth down, right? And if we didn't score, we kick a field goal, there's no more time on the clock. Well, we got, they got a penalty on third down, which then allowed us to get an automatic first down. But then there was only five seconds left in the half. So we had to throw a fade with five seconds left that's a little bit dicey, right? In hindsight, I would play into the penalty. I would have called a timeout with about 21, 22 seconds left. Right, I'm nitpicking here, right? I would have called a timeout with 21, 22 seconds left. So if they did get a penalty, there would have been eight to nine seconds left in the clock in that first down. So we could have still got one, potentially two plays off before we had to kick the final field goal while still not giving them time. So just having a plan for if there is a penalty, continue to give yourself more plays to score. So I would have called a timeout two to three seconds faster. Guys, good. We got Jaden. Perfect. Thank y'all.